Welcome to The Creative Present, a show that's dedicated to expanding your creative self-expression and at the same time, getting your projects done. And I'm your host, Joshua Townsend. A lot of times I hear people read material to me and I can hear that they're reading material to me, which is not the point of communication if you're going to be sharing it with someone through a medium other than yourself reading it. So in other words, if I were to read something to myself and just get the information, then that's no different than someone else reading it to me just to get the information. This is really important when it comes to any kind of narrative, any kind of storytelling, any kind of oral communication. So if we look at text on a page as an indicator or a symbol or a map or a way of navigating to share your story, and these little black marks on this white piece of paper are reminders for you of what your next thought or feeling is, then we've moved the dial. Then we're getting closer to replicating life with all of its power and infusement of energy and thoughts and feelings, positive and negative. And you really open us up to taking us on a ride, if you will. But if we're just reading the words on the page, then in today's world, we're talking about AI basically taking over because you're not going to add anything more than AI. Okay, so if we look at it from that perspective, now how can I make it more real for you? Because otherwise, you most likely have heard something like this before. I want to make it really real, like so that you'll never forget this and you'll always want to infuse your work with something more. If I were to go to a recipe book and I look through the recipe book and I see a recipe that includes you know, lentils and onion and garlic and da 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 da. And it says parsley, right, is one of the things. Okay. And if I cut the word parsley out of that book and I chop it up and I put it in the dish, I mean, that's laughable, right? Because that's not parsley. That's the word on the page that, that tells me I need to go and get parsley and have it in my kitchen in order to prepare this food. And then when I have parsley and it's next to basil or, or chives or cilantro or whatever it is, how do I know it's parsley? Well, I pick it up, I look at it, right? It's green, it has a certain feel. And then there's different kinds of parsley. Like there's flat, there's Italian, there's curly. I pick it up, I smell it, maybe I even taste it. Now I have parsley and now I can do whatever I need to do with that parsley for that dish. But even that's not enough because I need to know in this context, is this parsley a part of the dish? Like, is it in the dish like where I'm going to taste it? Or is it something that I'm just going to use to sprinkle on top as a garnish? It's the same thing when it comes to scripts. It's the same thing when it comes to especially coded words like I love you or I hate you or get out of my house or I never want to see you again. Those kinds of word phrases, those kinds of experiences are so emotionally loaded by what we have brought to it from our life experience or from what we've seen in other texts when we're reading stories. And by and large, we're going to be pulled so hard to go with the classic interpretation of whatever that is. When in reality, just like parsley, parsley could be a garnish. Garnish could be a part of the, the whole meal. We don't know yet because we don't have enough context. So in reality, those markings on those page, just like the word parsley, is a reminder to you that you need to have the experience of parsley at that moment. A thought and a feeling a point of view. And if you are saying, well, my character is a professional chef and they deal with this all day long and this is just like a laundry list. Well, that's fair enough too. There's always exceptions, always exceptions to the rule. And again, we went back to a literal, a literal translation of, oh, parsley. Well, that means that they could be a chef and then that's part of what they say every single day. But let's take it into context of someone who's 
ordering a dish at a restaurant and they want to make sure that the wait staff gets it right. It's like, I want to make sure that there's extra parsley because I love parsley. Or I want to make sure that no parsley touches that table because it makes me crazy to have even a sprig of parsley on my dish. See, now we've translated it to a, a real thought and a real feeling where, it's, where we've gone beyond just a laundry list. So if we could look at words on a page as not the final product, but the very beginning of the work that needs to be done. Now we've started to move the dial. Now we've started to execute at a higher level. And it's the same thing when you, the writer, are working on a piece that you're actually writing. It's the same process. You need to get to that experience from a firsthand, organic, real perspective first. Then make a notation of it. Otherwise, you're just creating stuff out of your head. And you can get really good at creating stuff out of your head. But the problem with that is, is that there's very few opportunities to make real authentic discoveries because you're in your head. But when you go through your sensory world, just like how you go through the rest of your life, when you go through your sensory world, then you open yourself up to the possibility of new newness. And that is connected to the fact that we live in an open system that is nature-based. As soon as you live and or work, well, you, we all live in nature-based system, whether we like it or not, to whatever degree you want to do that is up to you. But, you know, you can't get away from the fact that you have four seasons, even if you live in Southern California, you know. You can't get over the fact that the sun rises and, you know, and the moon sets. So we're in an open system, and the idea is, of course, is to work with that open system to create the best possible art that we can. So that's about how words are there as a denotation of the actual experience that's being communicated from the writer to the actor, from the writer to the person who's actually doing it, from the writer to the director, to the cinematographer, to wherever you are in that, in that spectrum, and it gets honed by the words we choose and the interpretation of, of that material and how much, how much of ourselves and how much sensation we can bring to that. So start looking at your scripts and start we're looking at your writing projects from that perspective and let me know how it goes. Thank you for listening. If you love what you're listening to, please subscribe and then share with fellow creatives. For more, go to joshuatownsend.com. 